If your net worth isn't above $10 million as a man, there's no point in dating in America. I traveled to Thailand. That trip ruined me. When your life is too good, you'll start creating problems out of thin air. American social life, the amount of sensitivity, getting triggered, virtually walking on eggshells. What's up guys? This is a long awaited collaboration that a lot of you have been requesting. This is Forrest Lee. I know a lot of you guys have watched his videos and um, if you don't mind just giving yourself a quick introduction. Hey everyone, my name is Forrest. I'm uh, an American living here in Bangkok, Thailand as an expat for the past three years. And I just make videos about lifestyle as an expat living here in Thailand. Yep. Yeah, I think in that we, we share a lot of similarities. I'm also from America as well. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna be doing a little interview here. So let's go ahead and start. So first off, why Thailand? Why Thailand? So I think I was originally influenced uh, back in the day when Anthony Bourdain was still alive. I, I binge watched a ton of his uh, series, No Reservations, and then Parts Unknown when he moved over to CNN. And I just was really profound by his Thailand episodes, him traveling to Chiang Mai with his chef friend, uh, you know, displaying a raw, gritty look of him getting drunk, eating good food, and just showing the raw nature of travel. You know, none of this uh, curated, uh, lovey-dovey stuff that you would see in, see in uh, mainstream television. Uh, so, joint, so watched a ton of that during my university days. Fast forward to my final year in the army, I was getting out and you know, I told myself that I would backpack around Southeast Asia once I got out of the army. Got out of the army, army in 2017 and made my first trip to Thailand uh, that same year in August. And when I, my first day when I landed in Bangkok, I, I just knew that I was completely enamored by this city, in this country. It's the raw sewage smell, the street food from, uh, just from the street food, the raw sewage smell, the raw gritty taxi. It was pure organized chaos. Some people hate it, but I knew I was completely in love by just the raw grittiness in stark comparison to how in America, everything is so organized, fully regulated, you know, toe the line one by one, pure organized. And, th and this was the complete opposite where you're living in a country where everything operates around the gray area. It's for some people, it's not for everyone, but I knew in my heart it was definitely for me. And I think ever since 2017, you know, I, I did that, that same year, I traveled to Thailand, visited family in Myanmar, and then visited Vietnam, came back. And every year since then, I've been wanting to come back to Thailand. It's a country that has never left my mind. And that trip, uh, in a sense, ruined me because that's all I could ever think about is how much I enjoy Thai people, Thai food, Thai culture, uh, the ease of travel, everything was so unregulated, you know, and I prefer that in a lot of countries that I travel, things that are very unregulated. Uh, so that's why I decided that due to those circumstances and those influences that I instantly fell in love with Thailand six years ago. And three years ago, I decided to make the move to move out here during COVID and the rest is history. Why do you think Bangkok over like places like Pattaya or Phuket because a lot of people they they dream of going Phuket, Pattaya, you know, for their own reasons. Um, and I'm sure you visited all those other cities. So yeah. yeah, why why Bangkok? Well, why Bangkok is because I, I definitely it's a Bangkok is a massive city, city, but it's also a very small city. There's plenty of amazing food options. There's plenty of uh, wonderful nightlife. Uh, many local expats, many local ties from all different backgrounds. You can connect with uh, local people. You can connect with, you know, business folks, influencers. It's it's also a great. It's all in one. It's a great place if you want to network with people. It's also a great great place that you want to do business with people. It's also a wonderful place to take your family and friends to go for a uh, night out all in town. There's plenty of good places to to try in Bangkok in such a small radius. You know, everything is so close to each other. International schools, bars, condos, uh, music halls, you name it. But Thailand, on the other hand, I, I, make fun of, uh, I make fun of people on my channel all the time about how it's a place where degenerates go to die. Uh, so it's, you definitely have the more uh, toxic uh, old degenerates 
that, uh, I don't know, they just haven't really done anything with their lives. And, uh, you know, Pattaya, I mean, it's, granted, this is all tongue in cheek. I don't, I don't care. Like, if you live in Pattaya or Pattaya, then, it's, you know, that's your choice. And, you know, I'm not here to judge. I'm only here to talk shit every now and then. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, Pattaya, I mean, Pattaya for me, two to three days or two days tops. And then that's it. And then I, I need to come back here. Phuket, you know, I, you know, in one of my trips uh, after 2017, I, I lived on the island of Koh Tao in 2018 for two months just to get my Paddy Dive Master and, you know, experience the island life. After two months of living on an island, I, I needed to get out because all I did was, you know, I scuba dive, went to the gym, ate, got drunk. That's pretty much it, you know, with, with island life. And if I were to live in Phuket, that's probably going to be the same thing. I know myself too well that island life would not work well with me. I would be the most unproductive piece of crap ever existed, not doing a whole lot, wasting my life away. So that's why I kind of need a Bangkok. Uh, Bangkok works for me. It's also an amazing, fantastic base. If you want to travel within East Asia, if you want to go to Central Asia, you want, you want to go to Europe, the Middle East, it's such a fantastic hub with a ton of wonderful commercial flights from different airliners. You can do local airliners, you can fly with Emirates, Qatar, you name it, uh, Asian airliners. If you can fly with EVA, China, ANA, JLA, you know, you've got international, it's a great base for international flights. So that's why I'm also a big fan of uh, Bangkok as well too. You've got everything at a small radius. And if you, even if you want to travel d uh, domestically within the country, Bangkok's another fantastic hub. You, there's plenty of bus routes that lead, depart from Bangkok, and you can go to Huang He, and you can go to Udon Thani, you can go to Isan, you can go to Chiang Mai. Grand, there's also the train station as well, too. You can do a overnight train to Chiang Mai. You can go to the south, over into Surat Thani, Chumpon, if you want to go around that area. So definitely a fantastic all-around hub. That's why I choose Bangkok. I love, I love the city tons. One of the best ways, if you're relatively new to living in Bangkok, uh, a good strategy is if you go to one of the more popular Eng uh, English pubs like Robin Hood Tavern or O'Shea's over on Prompong, go sit down and just, you know, get a beer, whatever, and just strike up a conversation with any of those guys from O'Shea's or Robin Hood Tavern. You can easily strike up a conversation instantly from some of the, some of the more OGs that have been living here for 20 to 30 years. And then you can also meet some Japanese expats. You can... Everybody's super friendly. They'll strike up a conversation with you or local ties as well, too. So that's actually a perfect place if you want to start a network or, you know, just have a nice friendly banter with people. Why do you prefer Thailand over like everywhere else? Like what are the what are the things you absolutely love about Thailand? Like if you could give it like a short list. Oh, man, I don't know about short list. Uh, <laughs> as long as you want. All right. So, uh, well, number one, I, th I think. Uh, you know, every, everybody's always super curious about dating here in, in Thailand as a single man. You know, and, you know, I'm going to mention race a bit, but, you know, as an Asian American dating in back in the States, you know, when it comes to our markability, Asian guys are always on the lowest on, on the total, totem pole, whether it's due to mainstream media or Hollywood portrayal of us being very effeminate, unmasculating, unmasculating males which kind of was the reason for me to, you know, start learn being better at talking to girls or going to the gym and stuff like that. Well, I would argue that it's the complete opposite if you were to come over here to Bangkok because, you know, whether if you want to meet a proper, you know, Thai girl that comes from an affluent family background, they usually tend to go for more Asian guys. I'd say dating, one of the best things I really appreciate it is if you're a single guy dating here in Thailand is that there's generally much more women than men here in Thailand. So then let's say if you're not, you're having a terrible luck dating your home country. And if you're thinking about being serious and settling down, this is probably one of the best places that you can find a traditional family oriented woman that also wants to settle down and start a family and, you know, focus on the traditional nuclear family. This is one of the best places that you can go to find a long-term partner, potentially a wife, hopefully it's going to be a wife. Uh, your probability of having that is much significantly much more higher than let's say if you were a date back in America. So I would always advise that if you want to, whether you're a single guy or if 
you want to settle down, one of the best places is to date here in Thailand. One of the best things about Thailand, and from this I actually find a lot of peace, is that you know, back, back in our home country, we're inundated by the 24-hour news cycle. Politics, geopolitics, current events. You know, following that, I used to follow that stuff back in high school in my early 20s. There's no return on investment for following the news. It's, this, it's, this, it's a cesspool of toxic information that doesn't serve you any good. One of the best play things about, you know, coming from the West and staying here in Thailand is that you're literally taken out from that 24-hour news cycle. You can just tune out of the 24-hour news cycle, focus on your work, focus on your family, friends, focus on your lifestyle here, and then that's, and then that's it. Because I guarantee you, when you're 75, 80 years old, 90, 100 years, and you're in the final months, days of your life, you know, you following geopolitics, none of that shit matters. It's, it's all irrelevant. So having you move, having a, coming from a Western ex, expat moving over here to Thailand, getting away from the 24-hour news cycle, focusing on what you need to do. And the thing is, my Thai isn't that good enough where I don't even know what's going on in Thai politics. So this is a scenario where ignorance is pure bliss. It's all, it's all that matters. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll add to that. Like in America, a lot of people who are very triggered and very um, uh, always keeping up to date with the politics and the news and very emotionally like triggered by that, I feel like they're not doing that consciously. They're doing it because the news and the politics, it gives them a sense of purpose, like, you know, because they're not occupied in some other purpose. So it, it's always occupying their mind because they want to put their energy or put their uh, thought into, into something and they want to uh, change something outside of themselves. But when you come to Thailand or when you travel to a new destination, it's like you're completely focused on yourself and you're completely focused on your peace, your happiness. So it's like these things that used to maybe trigger me back in America or trigger my friends and everybody, it's like it doesn't even cross my mind anymore because not it's, it's going to ruin my sense of peace. So stepping into a new, fresh environment, especially in an environment like Thailand, it's like why would I ever bother like being sucked into that world of politics and the whole like, uh, radicalization of and polarization of like the Western society in terms of everybody hating each other in terms of everybody being on a certain side that's one of the worst things I um, I did not like about America so yeah one thing I wanted to add to that is that you know when I when I went back home to California this past August for for my best friend's wedding you know I was able to reconnect with uh, some some uh, family neighbors uh, that lived next to my sister's uh, home and uh, they were asking me about you know, hey, have you been keeping up? I think at that time, uh, there's so much news on the UFO, these UF, UFO sightings or whatever. And, uh, you know, they were asking me like, hey, have you, you know, what do you think about the UFOs? You, what do you think about the UFOs? And to be honest, I, I drew like a blank stare. I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. And for me, it's like, to me, like, I'm thinking to myself, it's irrelevant. If anything, we should be talking about the financial markets, the S&P 500, cryptocurrency, you know, yeah. what, I mean, you know, the, you know, real estate, those are the things that I'm more, you know, interested in talking about, you know, the rise of 30 year mortgage rates, you know, call me an, an old Chinese uncle, but I'm slowly growing into that where to me, this is more, what I'm more concerned about because it, it affects, you know, the things that I'm doing. So it, in actuality, you kind of have to just, you know, for the guys that are living back in their home country in India by this 24 hour news cycle, if you can, try to tune out as much as you can until you eventually make your way and domiciling over in Thailand or wherever you choose to settle down at. Last thing that I love about Thailand, you know, Thai people. You know, I love Thai people because generally they're very peaceful, nice people. They do have very funny, funny things about, I, I love Thai people because very kind, hunt. they're very kind hearted. They're very open minded. They're also very conservative. And they do, Thai people do do certain things that are a bit quirky that I find quite interesting. Yeah. So for example, is that even though Thailand is predominantly a Buddhist country, mm -hmm. they'll pray to the Hindu gods, they'll pray to, you know, they'll pray to the Christian faith, they'll pray to whatever god, they'll pray, they'll give, they'll pray to multiple religions as long as it brings them luck so then they can win the lottery. 
That's one. That's one thing I, I thought it was very uh, adoring and cute about Thai people, you know. But at the same time, they'll they're just very kind-hearted people that will take care of you, and then at the same time, they'll they'll joke about you and make fun of you, but in a in a very kind and sincere way. Uh, so I, you know, when it comes to the very end, like I owe it to this country and I owe it to Thai people. They've they've always t taken care of me, and. The best way to take care of Thai people, give them money. Yeah, I was thinking money. <laughs> Just give them money. Don't give them any special gifts. Yeah, I think uh, Thai people are probably one of the most like empathetic people. It's like if you're bitter back at home and you come here, you can't help but to feel the energy here. It's like everybody has the best intentions towards you, and they treat you as if they're your neighbor. You know, that's I really agree with that. Um, so speaking about that, what are some things you don't particularly like about America? I know this list could be very long. You know, this could be a whole entire video for me as well. Um, and there are also a lot of great things about America, of course. But yeah, um, what do you think would be the things you don't like about America or the West? I think one thing, some things I don't like about America and from the West is that uh, the tax, I hate taxes. I also hate reg like over regulation as well too. So, uh, so for my home state of California, I was actually talking about this with a, a long-term expat friend of mine. Is that here? I mean, in Thailand or in excuse me, in California, you have your res you have zoning regulations. So then you have your residential area that you're living in. But then if you want to go somewhere, like let's say if you want to go for a night out on the, out on the town, you have to drive thirty to forty minutes, roughly, to San Francisco you know, pay for, you know, pay for $50 a night, $50, $60 for overnight parking, most likely more, uh, maybe $80, $90, and then spend an enormous amount of money going for drinks and then coming back and, you know, leave and having a crash somewhere, you know, in San Francisco. They don't make it easy for you to, to get around from place to place. Yeah. In Thailand, it's the complete op opposite, where there's virtually no zoning regulations. You know, you can... You can walk from your condo to your favorite local Thai spot, get some kapow, and then maybe walk five minutes, go to the Westin Hotel, get yourself a nice, you know, beverage, get some get some nice spirits, and then you can go take a ten minute motorbike ride to a local Thai spot like Taiwan Dang, you know, grab a back bucket of Sang Som, which is Thai whiskey, and see like you know a concert like a like a live cover band like a live Thai cover band playing. Everything can be accessible within perhaps a five to ten minute motorbike ride. Yeah. And one of the things I really love about uh, love about this love about uh, Thailand. Uh, another thing I really don't like about you know, and this is coming from a former California perspective, is that I really don't like the state taxes. Uh, recently, I I recently I actually flew to South Dakota and surrendered my California driver's license and my residency and actually domiciled as a South Dakota resident. Uh, so that's at least one thing I do appreciate is that moving forward, I don't have to worry about state taxes because I'm a South Dakotan re resident, but I still need to pay for f uh, federal taxes as well too. Uh, but I think everything is that uh, I, I've been dealing, I think one of the biggest things I don't like is the, uh, the strong bureaucracy in America. Uh, just if you need to, to get anything done, it takes, a, it's a ton of paperwork and it takes days to, and it's it's this whole waiting game. Yeah. It's even worse if you're in the military. That's all you do is all you do is wait. That's it. Uh, another thing I don't like about America is the dating as a man in America is. To be honest, if your net worth isn't above ten million dollars as a man, there's no point dating dating in, in America. You know, so I think for let me give you a, a good example. <clears throat> So, you know, with my girlfriend, I recently gave her an, an early Christmas pr present. I, I, I gifted her an iPhone. And her, when I surprised her with an iPhone, I was like, you know what? You know, I, I want you to upgrade your, your phone. You know, I got you this new iPhone. She was incredibly happy. You know, she got super emotional, like was, was in tears, was like, this is way too expensive. Like, don't do this. And I was like, no, like, you deserve it. You should get this iPhone. You know, you've been you know, a fantastic joy in my life. But if you were to, let's say, do, do the same thing with American women, you know, you gift her a, a nice iPhone and be like, that's it. 
you know. So it's in general, you think, right? Not not every. I, I saw, yeah, in general, it's like, oh, that's nice, you know, and you know, it's just women. Women over here are just definitely much more appreciative when it comes to the little things in life, you know. We're so. <clears throat> That's why, that's why I'm kind of thinking, and with the whole globalization of dating, whether it comes to Tinder, whether it comes to Bumble, uh, Instagram is really good for dating. The whole dating market has been completely globalized. We're uh, just an, a Western American woman expects a guy to at least be making $250,000 or more in order for them to be worth their time. So for me, it's, I, I just do not like the dating scene in, in in America at all. So I'm not saying, I know from what I'm saying, it's kind of a generalization when it comes to a lot of Western women. I'm sure there's a good amount, uh, there's a proportional amount that are still very traditional minded. But, you know, I'm talking, I'm coming from a perspective of just an, a very, just an average Joe, is that nowadays it's really hard for the average Joe to find a good woman. And for that average, you know, Joe, it's probably better for them to look for a wife overseas because you're going to have a much higher probability. The last thing I do not like about America is the ongoing culture war that has been, that has existed since 2016 because of a particular president that has, was a president back then. And, you know, we're not going to get into politics, but because of that, it's shifted a huge culture war when it comes to like, you know, when it comes to American social life. The amount of sensitivity, sensitivity, getting triggered, you know, snowflakes, uh, pronouns, all this other stuff. You're virtually walking on eggshells. And I think it's because that, and it's all due to having, to be honest, America is actually a pretty good life if you're trying to, you know, up and come, like trying to come up on the uh, socioeconomic ladder. But I think when... Your life is too good. You'll start creating problems out of thin air when things are perfectly fine with the way it is. Uh, so also like the ongoing rise of feminism, it's just, I, I think this, you know, feminism and all this stuff, it's, it does nothing but harm towards traditional nuclear families. You know, just, you know, husband, wife, nuclear family, you know, your traditional Christian family. So I'd say it's probably not doing anything for good family structures and family values. Whereas here in Thailand, it's the traditional norms are still very much alive. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with America. Like, as the saying goes, great times or good times create. Shit, what is it? Good times create weak men, weak men. Good create. times create weak times, weak times create weak, or actually. Uh, good times create weak men, right? Yeah, uh, good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times, hard times, hard times right. create. Good men, yeah. good men create. Uh, good men create great times. Great, great times. Some, something like that, yeah. Yeah, some, some like that. yeah, I agree completely. It's just kind of like how they say, like, good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times, hard crimes, hard... Oh, fuck. I don't even want to do that shit. Yeah, I agree with all the negative aspects about America. Uh, would you say there's things that you prefer in America over Thailand? One thing I do appreciate about America over Thailand is that, let's say if you're a foreigner or an expat, trying to start up start trying to start a business you know the most legal way here in Thailand even if you do even if you do all the paperwork all the steps correctly they'll still find ways uh, to put you at a very disadvantaged position I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get into detail what that, that is you guys can figure that out on your own but it's very hard as a foreigner to do business here in Thailand even if you're going through all the proper channels, it's very disheartening and it's, it can be a bit, you know, stressful trying to do everything properly. So that's, that's where I'm just going to leave that at. Do you think that you would ever move back to the States or do you think that you would live in Thailand essentially forever? I definitely, if it's a under and drastic circumstance if i have to move back to the states which i find that very hard but there's always that probability never say never but i could potentially move back but if that isn't in a circumstance if that's not a factor then i'll probably live here until i die to be completely honest with you 
you know, but I think at some parts I, even though I'm very committed in, in living here for the rest of my life, I also need to brush up on my tie. Yeah. I, I need to keep learning. So I'm still, uh, I'm still learning at the moment. As a closing thought, any advice or any tips towards anybody that would want to move to Thailand? You know, it's their first time here. Maybe they booked for a weekend or maybe they're looking to live here long term. Uh, what's something that they should know before coming here? Best advice I can really give you if you're interested in becoming an expat here in Thailand, and I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys, two things. Number one, have money. Money talks here. Number two, learn how to read people. If you're not good at reading people, you have to learn how to read people. And that's a particular soft skill that you need to be good at. Whether, because I've met a lot of great people a lot of fantastic people during my time here. But at the same time, I've also met my plethora of shitty people here in Bangkok as well, too. Uh, so I got good at learning how to read people during my six years in the military. And that has actually brought me brought that skill over to here in Bangkok. So that's a particular skill you need to be good at. Learn how to read people. All right. Well, I think that's about it. Uh, I'll leave Forrest's information down in the description. Check him out. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the interview, Forrest. Appreciate it, Paul. Thank Glad you, we got to do this collab. Same here. Yeah. Peace.